let's jump back to comp number two, creating 3D layers in AE, where we have our small little octopus character. We'll remove the keyframes for our Z rotation by simply clicking on the stopwatch. Next, we'll twirl all those parameters up. Then we'll reveal all of the shied layers that are already in this composition. So up in the timeline, click on the icon for the shy layers, and here you'll see other sources that have already been placed in the comp. First, let's turn on the visibility for layer number six called Cut Through Smoke. When we turn this on, we can see that this is a beautiful piece of smoke footage provided by Artbeats. Now, if we make this a 3D layer by clicking on the switch, then rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis by typing R on the keyboard and changing its orientation for X to 90 degrees, the layer seems to disappear. Remember, 3D layers in After Effects don't have a Z depth. So I'll click and drag the X value so that we can see some of the pixels on that layer. By changing the value to about 104%, I can see that these two layers intersect in 3D space, and where the pixels are closer to camera, they will obscure any pixels behind them. This means that with both layers in 3D space, as 3D layers, After Effects will give priority to parts of the individual layer closer to camera. We'll turn this layer off for a minute, then conceal the rotation properties by typing R on the keyboard again, then take a look at layer number two called Quick Grass. We'll turn the visibility for this on and make this 3D as well. If I parent layer number two to our octopus character, then by selecting the octopus layer, I'll open up the parameters for rotation, then rotate around the y-axis by clicking and dragging on the value for orientation. On the opposite side of the layer, we can see that the pixels on the octopus layer still have priority. That's because these two layers are coplanar. That means that they're both at zero in our Z position, and because they share the same pixel space, the layer on top is going to have priority. Now if I move the quick grass layer above the octopus, the quick grass layer will now have priority over the octopus. Again, rotating the orientation for the parent reveals that when neither layer is closer to camera, the hierarchy in the timeline will dictate which layer has priority. We'll set the orientation for the octopus layer back to zero, then unlink the parenting from the grass to the octopus. Next, let's turn on layer three. If we make layer one 2D by simply turning off the switch for 3D, this layer now becomes 2D again. Because that layer's hierarchy is on top of the 3D layer in the timeline, the grass will always render in front of the octopus, no matter what the 3D values are for the octopus. So if we change the orientation value for our octopus, he'll never cross the 2D plane of the grass in front of him. Next, we'll turn on the goldfish layer. We'll place the goldfish above the octopus layer, then make this layer 3D by turning on the switch. Because of the slight orientation change for the octopus, we can see where these both intersect. It doesn't really matter because we're going to move the goldfish in 3D space. So by typing P on the keyboard, we can reveal the position data. By changing the value for the Z position to a lower number, we can move the goldfish closer to camera. If we look at this from the top view by going to our comp window, then selecting top view, then use the comma key to zoom out a little bit, we can see the two layers marked with their default label colors. Here in front is our goldfish, simply a 2D layer, and here at an angle is our octopus. In order to see these a little better, we may want to label them. So here, underneath our labels, we'll label our octopus in red, and our goldfish in orange. The view of the grass hasn't changed from our active view. That's because those two layers are two-dimensional and aren't presented in 3D space by our virtual camera. Instead, they just show up in the background underneath all of our 3D layers. With the goldfish still selected, I may want to animate the layer so that it rotates around the octopus. By typing R on the keyboard, 
I could create an animation that rotates around by animating the Y rotation. If I click and drag on the values for the Y rotation, you can see that the values change around the center of the layer and not around the octopus itself. Instead of setting up the rotation on the goldfish layer, it might be easier to introduce a new layer to parent this to. I'll change this back to zero. Then from the layer pull-down window, I'll select new and create a new null object. If you haven't seen a null object before, it's simply a special layer that After Effects creates, which is 100 by 100 pixels, with its anchor point located in the upper left-hand corner of the layer. Additionally, it won't be visible when it renders. The null layer can also be turned into a 3D layer. By turning it into a 3D layer, I have access to all of the properties that accompany a 3D layer, including rotation. We'll switch back to the active view by using the Escape key, then zoom in a little bit with the period key. By default, the null object is placed at the center of our composition. So simply parenting the goldfish to the null layer, then using R on the keyboard to open up the rotation values, and animating the rotation for Y at zero with a value of zero degrees, and at the end of the composition using a rotation value for one, and simply slipping this keyframe one frame past the end of the comp, I set up a relationship where the goldfish now rotates around the center of the null. Because all of these layers are in 3D, as the goldfish rotates back in space behind the octopus, it appears smaller and becomes blocked from view. I'll close the parameters up, then turn on the background layer. All that's left to do is press 0 on the number pad to see our very first 3D animation in After Effects. So I hope you've been able to see that even though After Effects uses these planar cards in 3D space, we can create some very exciting animations by animating all of the different 3D transformations that we have available in After Effects 3D.